Well, this is it, our final lecture in this series on biology. I've really enjoyed talking about these things, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about them. And before we go, as I promised, I'd like to discuss one last topic, and that is how much should we trust what we hear and what we learn about science? And how do we know what we can trust? Well, uh, you may have heard from your teacher that, uh, for example, Wikipedia is not a trustworthy source. source. Uh, for example, um, you're doing a report on something and they say, well, you can go to any source except for Wikipedia. Well, I don't personally agree with that. I think that Wikipedia is a wonderful source, especially for facts. People have done um, different fact checking and because Wikipedia is so large, yes, it may have lots of errors, but the percentage of errors on facts in Wikipedia is actually lower than a lot of other resources. So I think that that's a wonderful source to trust and there are many good websites to trust. But the question is, well, how do you know? Well, um, we've been learning a lot about disease in this series, a lot about environmentalism and that responsibility to protect. And those two topics and many others are highly politicized. They're highly, uh, people have opinions. It's not just political, people just have opinions about how things are. And it's important to people. People don't like to see animals going extinct. People don't like to be suffering from a disease that has no cure. People want to know how to solve those kinds of problems. And so because they have strong opinions, they're going to want other people to have similar opinions to them so that things can happen, so that animals can be protected, so that new drugs can be discovered and, and put out on the market for the particular diseases that they or their friends are suffering from. So this, when emotions get involved, that is when you have to be very cautious about what you read. For example, um, in the case of Wikipedia, what are your favorite Wikipedia websites? Uh, which pages have you gone recently to in Wikipedia to learn about things? Do you trust what you're learning on Wikipedia? And what about on other web pages? Do you go and learn about uh, diseases on a certain website? Uh, which ones do you trust? Which ones are the worst websites in your opinion? And why do you have that opinion? Is it because those websites disagree with what you have been taught from people that you trust? Or is it that they disagree with what you would like to think about the world around you? Those are both possibilities and they can both happen at the same time. Now, my lecture is to you. Uh, I, you know, I've strived for facts. Uh, of course, in the very nature of giving these lectures, there's many uh, opportunities for me to say something wrong and those are opportunities for you to check my facts and not just trust everything that I say, of course. Uh, but what are some examples in um, the history of humans where things have gone awry? Uh, we've already talked about how medicine has gone awry. For example, scurvy was not, uh, the cause of it was not known, even though some people had suggested that it was a vitamin C deficiency and that merely taking a little teaspoon of lime juice on long voyages across the ocean would prevent uh, scurvy in sailors. Uh, some people thought that that was a, a ridiculous notion, and yet it turned out to be true. So we've already talked about some of those things. Uh, a story that I want to share with you uh, is something I recently heard about, about coconut oil and coconut products. Also palm oil and palm products uh, fall under this category. Uh, for a long time, these products, because they have a long shelf life, they resist oxygen coming in and damaging the taste and quality of the food were used in a lot of food products. But uh, because growers in certain developed world uh, countries were worried about these uh, products of coconut oil and palm oil coming from uh, less developed countries and flooding their markets, they went on a smear campaign against these uh, types of oils and products coming from other countries. Uh, Smear might be a little bit of a harsh word, but uh, they had help from other people that were genuinely concerned about the, uh, the health and welfare of people in their country. So for example, in the United States, uh, there was a gentleman who took out whole page ads in the New York Times and other uh, major newspapers to warn people about the ill health effects of eating coconut oil. And this was in the 1980s. So, um, 
what ended up happening was very quickly, major producers of food, like General Mills, took from their products all tropical oils and started inserting instead oils that could be grown in more temperate climates, like in uh, developing, developed countries like the United States. Now, um, this actually seems to have led to worse health problems in the United States, and there's kind of a shift back to eating some of the other uh, foods because of uh, the worry about trans fats. So this is just one example of how uh, our minds need to be sharp and cautious and ever vigilant against what we hear and what we read in the news because it might change 10 or 20 years from when we're learning about these facts. And what the scientists say may also change. You have to investigate the facts for yourself. If you see a whole page ad by somebody in the newspaper, keep in mind that might have just been paid for and might not be based on reproducible evidence. So that's why when we learn a new science, learning biology, for example, in this series, we should always remember that we're learning it with our, our eyes wide open. We're learning how to learn and how to be very uh, cautious and, and somewhat critical in what we learn. So I hope that you've enjoyed learning about biology, learning about the amazing wonders that are microscopic and even submicroscopic inside of the cell, and a new appreciation for the ecology and ecosystems in your own backyard. And I hope that you will also continue to learn biology with your eyes wide open, ready to process, analyze, and even criticize what you're learning in your textbooks on the internet and what people tell you about uh, science, biology, and other sciences in general. I've enjoyed speaking with you, and I hope that you've enjoyed taking this class. If you're going deeper, this is your last opportunity to have a little assignment from BioBook. There are many leaves and branches that you haven't read yet, but the one you might want to read now is called, Are There Limits on What We Can Use the Scientific Method to Explore? I hope you've enjoyed the BioBook, and feel free to, uh, to recommend it to your friends.